Published, 1232 Eastern Daylight Saving Time, the 5th of April 2018, updated, 1437 Eastern Daylight Saving Time, the 5th of April 2018 Defined Central American migrants from the sprawling human caravan, snaking north through Mexico taunted President Trump and vowed to continue their push towards the U.S., declaring, We'll see you soon Mr. President, and they told DailyMail.com about the reality of what Trump called the strong immigration laws of Mexico, revealing that in fact they were being given 20 or even 30 day passes to travel freely and told to report to immigration centers, which dot the U.S. Far from being broken up, as Trump claimed on Thursday morning, the caravan was being helped on its way to Mexico City with coaches which arrived not long after he tweeted. And while Mexican officials had encouraged it to disperse, they did so by giving permits to stay in the country without asking a single question about gangs and crimes. Central American migrants taking part in the migrant via Cruces caravan towards the United States get into a bus as they start leaving a sport complex where they were camping in Matias Romero, Oaxaca State, Mexico, on Thursday William Castillo, 42, Christian Daniel Hernandez, 8, and Ana Maria Hernandez, 30, of San Salvador, El Salvador, hold their temporary travel documents as they plan to seek political asylum in Mexico City, the family is currently waiting at the Ferro Carolero via Octoref. Morales Sports Center in Matio is Romero, Oaxaca, Mexico migrant children, traveling with the Pueblos and Fronteras group, play in a large pile of donated clothing at the Ferro Carolero Victor F. Morales Sports Center far from being broken up, as Trump claimed on Thursday morning, the caravan was being helped on its way to Mexico City with coaches which arrived not long after he tweeted. Pictured above, children from the group line up for food A ticket for the bus taking migrants from Matio is Romero, Oaxaca, Mexico, to Mexico City costs each individual 400 Mexican pesos, which is approximately $22 President Donald Trump gave Mexico a rare pat on the back for taking a wrecking ball to a caravan of 1,200 migrants that was headed to the United States organizers, Pueblos and Fronteras, people without borders, say they will only go as far as Mexico City where the Lucha movement, Spanish for fight, will disband rather than march to the border. But many of the 1,000 or so migrants, the majority fleeing gang-plagued Honduras, told DailyMail.com they faced persecution or death if they returned to their homeland and would press ahead to the U.S. Regardless, it's his country, Senior Trump can do what he wants to. He can put as much military on the border as he likes, said Jose Acosta, a 35-year-old farmer escaping violence in the Honduran city of Morazin, but when it comes to it, I will cross the border. I can assure you that I'm going to get into the U.S., I have faith in God. His determination was echoed by Salvadoran national Marvin Giovanni Alvarez, 39, who lived illegally in Atlanta, Georgia, for a year before he was deported in 2013, wrenching him away from his wife Daisy, 36, and sons, Marvin, 20, and 18-year Gerardo, Trump is crazy. He's racist. The National Guard doesn't worry me, it's all bulls asterisk asterisk asterisk, he told DailyMail.com, I'll be reunited with my family. See you soon Mr. President, Alvarez's harrowing backstory is typical of many of the hundreds of disheveled migrants sheltering in dilapidated locker rooms or laying under trees or tarps inside the blisteringly hot Victor F. Flores Morales Sports Center in the rural town of Matias Romero, he was targeted by MS-13 gangsters after returning to El Salvador, stabbed three times, once in the head, and warned he would be murdered if he didn't join up, if they see me again they kill me. The gangs are even here in Mexico. So tomorrow I go to the United States, nobody is going to stop me, he vowed, migrant, traveling with the Pueblos and Fronteras group, play outside at the Ferro Carolero Victor F. Morales Sports Center in Matias Romero, Oaxaca, Mexico organizers, Pueblos and Fronteras, people without borders, say they will only go as far as Mexico City where the Lucha movement, Spanish for fight, will disband rather than march to the border. Pictured above, migrants from the group Relax in Matias Romero, Oaxaca, Mexico Marvin Giovanni Alvarez, 39, of El Salvador, and others relax in a field in Matias Romero, Oaxaca, Mexico. Alvarez was targeted by MS-13 gangsters after returning to El Salvador, stabbed three times, once in the head, and warned he would be murdered if he didn't join up Daisy Galeves, 40, a migrant traveling with the Pueblos and Fronteras group, says she left Honduras because her daughter was being violated on the way home from school and her brother was killed by gangs. The migrants had traipsed unimpeded past Mexican police checkpoints and military bases until reaching Matias Romero at the weekend, where organizers herded them towards the largely dilapidated public sports complex. 
complex that has been their bustling, sun-baked HQ since the weekend Mexican immigration officials have visited the camp children at the camp pictured above each day inviting migrants to apply for transit permits granting them anything from a month to a year to officially apply for asylum Two trans people of Honduras, Chanel Smith, 26, who was shot three times, and Liz Lobo, 24, who was stabbed in the neck, are traveling with the Pueblo Sin Fronteras group. They are currently waiting in a field at the Ferro Carolero Victor F. Morales Sports Center in Matias Romero, Oaxaca, Mexico, for permissions to continue their journey north. Both Smith and Lobo have been violently attacked in Honduras and are seeking asylum in the United States. Jose Acosta, 35, who is traveling with the Pueblos and Fronteras group, rests in a field at the Ferro Carolero Victor F. Morales Sports Center in Matias Romero, Oaxaca, Mexico Travelers have bedded down in crowded corridors, under bleachers or beneath tarps draped over swings, using a putrid-smelling stream for a toilet and surviving. On donations of food, water and clothing from local townspeople Elsie Mejia, 25, who will give birth in roughly 10 days holds her 20 travel document to travel within Mexico. She is currently waiting at Ferro Carolero via Dr. F. Morales Sports Center. The refugee caravan 2018 set out en masse from the southern Mexican border city of Tapachula on March 25, the majority traveling on foot with a few smaller groups hitchhiking, hopping on buses, or clinging to the roofs of trains. Similar caravans have crossed Mexico for the past several years but organizers say political unrest in the wake of a contentious November election in neighboring Honduras has swelled numbers from several hundred to more than a thousand, even so, the event passed largely unnoticed until Trump, apparently responding to a news segment on Fox News, denounced the migrants as dangerous and implored Congress to toughen immigration laws before they swamp the U.S. He also warned the Mexican government he would cut off trade talks if they didn't halt the caravan, which even if it reached the border, would make up just a small proportion of the roughly 30,000 people caught trying to sneak across every month. The migrants had traipsed unimpeded past Mexican police checkpoints and military bases until reaching Matias Romero at the weekend, where organizers herded them towards the largely dilapidated public sports complex that has been their bustling, sun-baked HQ since the weekend. Since then, the bedraggled travelers have bedded down in crowded corridors, under bleachers or beneath tarps draped over swings, using a putrid-smelling stream for a toilet and surviving on donations of food, water and clothing from local townspeople, with barely any police on hand and just a handful of official organizers, 15 or so. Migrants have donned neon vests and are charged with keeping order across the bustling camp, which spans several soccer fields, a swimming pool and a baseball field. Mexican immigration officials have visited each day inviting migrants to apply for transit permits granting them up to 30 days to officially apply for asylum. A woman changes her baby's diaper while others look on at the Ferro Carolero Victor F. Morales Sports Center in Matias Romero, Oaxaca, Mexico but migrants told DailyMail.com it was surprisingly easy to secure temporary permits allowing them to stay in the country, the majority for a 30-day window. The documents say they have to make an appointment to the closest immigration center to their place of residence but do no list any restrictions on travel or forbid them from heading towards the U.S. The Mexican government began handing out transit or humanitarian visas to people in a caravan of Central American migrants, and said the procession of 1,000 or so migrants that drew criticism from President Donald Trump had begun to disperse a migrant child place with a tigger stuffed animal and other toys while resting near his family's belongings at the Ferro Carolero Victor F. Morales Sports Center in Matias Romero, Oaxaca, Mexico with no homes to go to, migrants are sleeping on mats surrounded by their belongings inside the Ferro Carolero Victor F. Morales Sports Center the move was hailed by Trump in two different tweets as evidence that he had forced the Mexicans to use their strong immigration laws against the caravan. But migrants told DailyMail.com it was surprisingly easy to secure temporary permits allowing them to stay in the country for a 30-day window. The documents say they have to make an appointment to the closest immigration center to their place of residence but do no list any restrictions on travel or forbid them from heading towards the U.S. The maximum window people are being granted to temporarily stay is 30 days. But many migrants deemed low priority or those with errors or gaps in their ID papers, have been given an alternative document simply giving them 20 days to remain in the territory of Mexico without granting them an interview. However, there is nothing stopping them from applying again when they have the correct papers. I'm giving birth in 10 days but they rejected me because of a discrepancy, said Honduran migrant Elsie Mejia, 25, who is traveling with her husband Jose Lanza, 21, and 4-year-old daughter, Shija, but all I need is 20 days. Like a lot of people here I just need enough time to make it to the US border. 
I hope to God the Americans won't turn back a heavily pregnant woman, an official with Mexico's Instituto Nacional de Migración said roughly 600 permits were rubber-stamped at the camp, with slightly more of the 20-day variety issued to migrants. The official, speaking on condition on anonymity, said many of those requesting paperwork were probably just happy to have a legal window to reach the U.S. border. Those asking for 30 days and formal interviews were more likely wanting to stay permanently in Mexico. Migrants, traveling with the Pueblos and Frontiers group, make lemonade outside at the Ferro Carolero Victor F. Morales Sports Center Matias Romero local Daniela Talantos 24, distributes food to the Pueblos in Fronteras migrant group at the Ferro Carolero Victor F. Morales Sports Center a baby rests on a woman's chest as they listen during a meeting at the soccer stadium at the Ferro Carolero Victor F. Morales Sports Center single mother Cide Madrid, 23, holding Owen, 6 months, and Delma Castro, 21, holding Brian Michael, 8 months, are traveling with the Pueblos and Frontiers group, and are currently stopped at the Ferro Carolero Victor F. Morales Sports Center Castro, a mother of two from Colon, Honduras, says she would never have had the fortitude to travel 260 miles, or an estimated 86 hours, on foot with nowhere to dry their clothes. Migrants are hanging their items on a nearby fence after washing to allow them to dry outside Salvador and National William Castillo, 42, waited 20 minutes to speak with agents from Mexico's Instituto Nacional de Migración who came to the camp Wednesday, they checked his passport and asked a handful of questions before issuing the single-page documents to him, his wife Ana Maria Hernandez, 30, and their 8-year-old son, Christian Daniel, they asked basic information, where we are from, where we plan to stay. They didn't ask any questions about gangs or crimes, he told DailyMail.com, we had no idea what to expect but it was not a tough process to get the documents. Nothing has been easy in this journey but this was surprisingly smooth, this isn't a pass to let us stay forever, this is to make a meeting. We have 30 days. If we don't, they deport us, there are Instituto Nacional de Migración centers in most major Mexican cities and 21 stationed along the U.S.-Mexican border. Custillo says he plans to apply for asylum in Mexico rather than attempt to cross to the U.S. but he added, they didn't say anything about where I could or couldn't go, as Trump tweeted on Thursday morning that the caravan was largely broken up, part of it was being helped to move north far more rapidly. A fleet of buses arrived at the sports complex offering migrants wanting to travel to Puebla a 400 Mexican pesos, $22, ride. There were no police or immigration officials present. Puebla, just south of Mexico City, is where activists will hold a rally Friday and provide free access to immigration lawyers to help them apply for asylum in either Mexico or the U.S. The caravan will then officially disband although Irenio Mujicars 8, the group's Mexico coordinator, predicted around 20% of the migrants could push on unsupervised. He told DailyMail.com the caravan was organized each year to highlight the plight of desperate Central American immigrants, not to storm the U.S. border, and laughed off the idea they were a threat to the American people. A woman takes a nap outside the Ferro Carolero Victor F. Morales Sports Center in Matias Romero, Oaxaca, Mexico Jose Arnoldo Avina Lino, 23, Miguel Angel Martinez Lino, 29, and Juan Carlos Clotter Lino, 40, are traveling with the Pueblos and Frontiers group, and are currently stopped at the Ferro Carolero Victor F. Morales Sports Center Marvin Giovanni Alvarez, 39, of El Salvador, shows a stab wound on his neck in a field at the Ferro Carolero Victor F. Morales Sports Center Red Cross workers diagnose an infant migrant with a fever at the Ferro Carolero Victor F. Morales Sports Center in Matias Romero, Oaxaca, Mexico There is very little police presence in the vast camp, so volunteers have taken up handling its ins and outs. Pictured above, Red Cross workers diagnose an infant migrant with a fever Migrants line up to take a bus from the Ferro Carolero via Dr. F. Morales Sports Center in Matio is Romero, Oaxaca, Mexico, to Mexico City or Puebla to attend an immigration summit. Coach buses can typically carry approximately 50 people, so it will likely take many trips to take the migrants from Matio is Romero, Oaxaca, Mexico, to Mexico City or Puebla. That is ridiculous. It's worthy of a movie. Only a fraction of those people will actually make it across the border. It's highly militarized as it is, said Mujic Mars 8. As usual Donald Trump plays the politics of fear, the brownies are coming to get us. We have 400 women and 300 kids here. They may throw a ball or point a toy gun at someone, that's about as dangerous as it gets.
These people are fleeing the same gangs that Trump is worried about. Among those waiting anxiously for the caravan to move is Alfredo Munoz, 22, who is yet to secure temporary paperwork for his wife Carolina, 21, son Ed Hen, 2, and 4-year-old daughter, Daly. He says he's desperate to reach the U.S. but knows his family will make easy pickings for cartel robbers and kidnappers unless they travel with others for security. As Munoz talks he pulls back his little girl's mousy brown hair to reveal a bullet wound at the base of her skull. She has a corresponding exit wound on her left cheek, a chilling reminder of when masked gangsters sprayed bullets at his front door in Colon, Honduras. The gangsters want to own everyone but I said no beat me up, they threatened my wife, he told DailyMail.com, they came at night and fired 25 times into the house. They hit my daughter in the back of the head but somehow she survived, we've been traveling now for 10 to 11 days, walking 4 hours a day. It was a hard decision because I knew my family would suffer. Someone robbed our bag of medicine, there's no way we can stay in Mexico though, the gangs can still get us here. We have to carry on until we reach the U.S. The alternative is death. Fleeing similar violence is Chanel Smith, a trans woman who decided to leave the Honduran capital, Tegucigalpa, after she was shot three times in the street. A 26-year-old teacher, she entered Mexico legally but joined the caravan because it meant she could travel north in safety and gain access to lawyers, parents Alfredo Munoz, 22, and Carolina Munoz, 21, and children Ed Hen, 2, and Daly, 4, are traveling with the Pueblos and Fronteras group, and are currently stopped at the Ferro Carolero Victor F. Morales Sports Center migrants, traveling with the Pueblos and Fronteras group, listen during a meeting at the soccer stadium at the Ferro Carolero Victor F. Morales Sports Center without actual showers nearby, migrants are using large buckets to help one another shower next to a well at the Ferro Carolero Victor F. Morales Sports Center Two young boys watch as a man pours water into a bucket while making lemonade at the Ferro Carolero Victor F. Morales Sports Center A well has served as the migrants' shower as they live at the camp in Matias Romero, Oaxaca, Mexico, in hopes of still moving north. A migrant woman, traveling with the Pueblos and Fronteras group, sifts through donated clothes at the Ferro Carolero Victor F. Morales Sports Center migrants look for some useful clothes in a donation pile at the Ferro Carolero Victor F. Morales Sports Center Earlier this week Central Americans taking part in a caravan called Migrant Via Crookies wait in line to get a meal in Matias Romero, Oaxaca State Elsewhere in Matias Romero, Oaxaca State, Mexico, migrants taking part in the caravan march to protest against Donald Trump on Tuesday gangs target the trans community to move their drugs because they are particularly vulnerable. If you say no this is what happens, she tells DailyMail.com, revealing a 12-inch scar across her stomach and a similarly shocking wound along her left forearm, I was waiting for a taxi when a man walked up to me and fired a pistol three times. I was hit in the arms and the chest. One of the bullets passed through my heart. I was in a coma for three days, I don't know if it was the police or the gangs, they are as bad as each other. They never caught them, they did nothing. That's when I knew I had to leave, despite Trump's repeated warnings about unchecked immigration, data issued by U.S. Customs and Border Protection reveals that the number of migrants caught trying to cross the border fell to a low of 15,700 in April, the figure was as high under as 42,400 in January 2017 under the Obama administration, despite the huge influx of migrants into their town, the people of Matias Romero, population 38,000 appear to have rallied around them, with locals donating water, rice, beans and old clothes, we are not a charity, we are not a church. We just live here and we want to help, said Daniela Talantos 24, as she served steaming bowls of salchica and rice from the back of a great pickup truck. She and 10 members of her family spent hours cooking up the spicy sausage and potato stew to feed the hungry newcomers. Does this look like an army? I don't think so. They are very welcome here. They have done nothing wrong stupidity, without similar acts of kindness from complete strangers, 21-year-old Delma Castro, a slender mother of two from Colon, Honduras, says she would never have had the fortitude to travel 260 miles, or an estimated 86 hours, on foot, she managed it despite having to carry her two kids, 8-month-old Brian Michael and Jose Manuel, 3, as well as a couple of bags of their belongings, my partner is in jail and I'm trying to get to my sister in the United States. It's been extremely hard, I'm alone, my feet ache, my kids have fevers. But in the cities we passed through the people had big hearts and they gave us food, she said, we are not happy, we are suffering so much. But I'll do anything to give my children, God permitting, a better life.